Good afternoon. Thank you for joining the Hitachi Data Systems Room. I know you had a pick of three. Uh, my name is Matt Mosley. I'm with Pintaho Business Analytics. We were brought in under the Hitachi Group umbrella to help with the Internet of Things initiative that they have ongoing. And it is my pleasure to introduce Dr. Henry Zarang, PhD. He is Director of Enterprise Analytics at Highmark Health and is here today to talk to you about some of the initiatives that Highmark has in the big data space. Thank you. Thanks. Sorry, I'm going to start my timer here. It might keep me on track. So I'm Henry Zarang, Director of Enterprise Analytics at Highmark Health. And today I'm going to talk a bit about some of the ways, actually primarily one way, that we're using um, big data to help us bring some value to our members. And since this is a fairly broad audience, I'm going to start a little bit about my background, um, see if it resonates with anyone and maybe, maybe helps others if, if possible. <laughs> then I'll talk about Highmark as an enterprise, especially how it relates to big data, and the broader landscape of healthcare, particularly how it is affecting how and why we use big data in the healthcare setting. Um, so I'm primarily an engineer by training at biomedical engineering. And I, I started out with an emphasis in microfabrication and microfluidics. And here we go. And with that, you know, I learned some of the standard engineering things, math, physics, uh, chemistry, biochemistry on the biomedical side. And in my graduate work, I took on projects focused on genetics and physiology, where I, you know, learned a little bit broader um, set of, of skills, computation and stochastic processes, as well as things like prion disease, cancer, cell biology, immunology. And then for my postdoc, I did some neurobiology work, which you know, taught me a little bit broader aspect of genetics, so epigenetics, uh, complex systems, computational biology. And eventually, I moved into predictive modeling, data analytics, and here at, at Highmark in the healthcare setting. And so, you know, about half of these things really help me with this kind of analytics and, and modeling perspective. But it's the other half that helps me in the healthcare setting. So, you know, I, I really appreciate what I'm able to do here at my company, but I probably wouldn't be quite as effective if I were in another industry. Because even though I'd have some of this background, I wouldn't have those kind of tangential components that help me understand the broader business needs and the broader industry needs that people need to understand to drive value from the analytics. And, and so, you know, if you're looking at, at staffing um, portions of your company, those are kinds of things that you can consider. And if you're an individual, maybe, you know, you can figure out what your extra kind of facets, what industry those mostly fit in, or even what divisions of a company. Uh, you know, so something like Highmark, we are a fairly large, where do I have to point this? There we go. All right. Thank you. Um, we're a fairly large enterprise. And, and I say this, again, with coming back to the fact that we're talking about big data here. So we've got our health, um, I mean, our, our insurance platform. So health, dental, stop loss. We've got our vision products. We've got a separate IT solutions company that is a claims processing and data and analytics platform that serves actually as the back office for multiple blues plans. So it's a fairly uh, large and, and robust system. And then right in the middle here, we have the Allegheny Health Network, which is our provider arm and, and uh, physician organizations. And you know, Highmark Health, the parent company, which is where I sit, is the umbrella organization over all of this. And we're still coming together as a cohesive organization. And as this is happening, next slide, please. <laughs> We're bringing this together in a changing landscape, a broader changing landscape within healthcare. All right. 
Um, I, I can talk a little bit about it as we keep going. So the broader, oh, perfect. The, the broader landscape of healthcare is changing and will continue to change for a little while. So changing role of the consumer. So things like high deductible health plans that have been around before are becoming more prevalent. And there are pros and cons to them. There are multiple ways to implement them. But one thing that they all have in common is that they force you, force me as the individual, to have more insight into what our healthcare actually costs us, um, how much money actually goes towards healthcare. So it begins us thinking about that as a consumer, not just as some you know, adjacent part of our lives. Regu oh, now it's working. Regulations, uh, things like, like HIPAA and high tech, help us become the owners of our health data in general. So not just our health care data like claims and medical records, but our health data, Fitbit trackers and, um, and, and Jawbone and things like that. So you know, there's a, um, a lot of things that are pushing us to be more of a consumer. Increasing role of non-traditional delivery. So things like consumerism and socioeconomic data help us when we're talking about um, like mobile and web platforms, as well as things like at-home testing and monitoring and, um, and, and uh, virtual visits. New reimbursement models, gain share, risk share agreements. These are things that encourage the provider to focus more on quality outcomes. Um, so quality becomes more important than just what they do to you, what procedures they perform, um, their bottom line depends on who, what your outcome is, what happens to you. Wireless, mobile, Internet of Things, expansion. So these are all things that are happening to us from a health perspective. They're also health, happening within healthcare and, and even within Highmark. Regulations. The individual marketplace is expanding. So a, a huge foundation of what the insurance business, uh, health insurance business used to be built on were these large groups where they didn't necessarily need to keep each of you happy. They just need to keep your employer happy enough to keep them on as clients. Um, that's changing. As we have individual products, it's no longer this large conglomerate that is a client. It is each of you individually that's a client. So all of those reports, all of the knowledge, all of the information we used to have to know for, you know, let's say a, a few thousand clients, we now have to know for hundreds of thousands or, or even more members individually. Uh, so that's a huge, you know, just technological expansion. Team approaches to care. So things like uh, patient-centered medical, medical homes, accountable care organizations. Again, these aren't new, but they're becoming more prevalent in the industry. And what they require is that the care teams know what is going on with you, and they all have a line of sight into you wholly as a, as a health individual. Um, so instead of the PCP coming, you know, or you coming to the PCP, talk to them, they you know, ask you questions and, and maybe do some tests, then decide you need to go to a specialist. They send you to a specialist. The specialist starts back from ground zero ask you those same questions, does some of those same tests, um, on and on. We have these team approaches that require information among the healthcare providers need to be synced. And also, these are coming with new reimbursement models. It means that that information also has to be synced with the health insurer. And you, know, you can think of Highmark Health. We've got the payer and provider there together. Even outside of that, these same relationships are happening. They don't have to be within the same company or the same organization. Um, these relationships are happening between payers and providers much more frequently. And part of that is allowed by the definition of quality metrics and, um, and, and value-based payment systems that allow, again, the payment, the reimbursement for physicians to be based much more on quality and the value that they bring to your health rather than just what they do to you from a service perspective. So at Highmark, we have 
again, a, a variety of companies that have been brought together. Um, a lot of what we want to know is not new. A lot of the data that we need is data that we already have. But the real problem is that now we need, we're being forced to have a holistic view of that. And we've never needed that before. So there are these things called, that we call care gaps. Uh, that, that have to do with you know, how healthy a population is, and that helps us know how healthy a population is. And there's an area within every health insurer that needs to know that. They focus on that. They spend all of their time learning about that. And they primarily would use claims data, and they would use look at your historic view of your chronic conditions to start determining these care gaps, these places where we think there are things that should be happening to you from a historic perspective, but they're not. Um, and that's a problem for us. Now we need a much more holistic view of that. So not just payer information that isn't just claims, but it's enrollment, product, benefits, medical risks, pharmacy data, call center. Um, all of these uh, disparate systems need to be brought together as well as provider, which isn't just an EMR, but it's also lab results, vitals, clinical and transcript notes, uh, prescriptions, again, call center. So all of these various sources of data now that give us different perspective on who you are, right? So the payer data is great because it's a 360 degree view of who you are clinically. Anywhere you go, no matter when or where or who, as long as you use your insurance, your insurer will know about it. Uh, your provider, on the other hand, does not. They only know if you come to them, maybe if you go into their system, if they're a larger system. Uh, the beauty of the provider data, it is it's very, very nuanced. It's subtle. You can get a lot of detail from that data. Um, but it's kind of blocky and chunky. There are lots of holes in it. So we can use both the payer data and the provider data to build a really uh, much more detailed view of who you are, a much more nuanced view of who you are clinically, to better understand not just your chronic conditions, but emergent conditions. And, and I have some standard uh, conditions here, but, but it goes much deeper than the standard things like diabetes and COPD and CAD and stuff like that. Um, but to understand who you are from a holistic view and as we engage with you from the clinical setting, there's a need to understand how to best engage with you. So things like consumerism data, geospatial data, your consumer channel preference, how should we be contacting you, uh, your message preference, what sorts of things should we be bringing to you versus bringing to you to get you engaged in your health. So, this is all a lot of data. Um, and now it's a lot of data that not only needs to be brought together so we can understand it, but going back to that previous slide, it's data that the individuals will want to know, that you'll want to know. It's data that the physicians need to know. Um, so not only is it getting the data and building understanding from it, but it's also getting that information out and making it available and usable to the care teams, care coordinators, uh, and, and physicians. So we support this, again, data, we just went over that. Infrastructure, you need a, a landing zone, a big data platform to do all of this. Um, but then you can build something like a logical data warehouse where you take multiple components that maybe have their own infrastructure components, right, IT, that have their own strengths and weaknesses and lay them behind something like a veil of data virtualization so that you can create this kind of logical data warehouse where it all seems like the same thing for the front end user. And the front end users come in and, and they don't care where the data is sitting, but they can access it and they can get what they need to know. Um, from an organization and talent perspective, the main thing I want to focus on, I mean, we know most of this, is that, and, and I've been talking with people throughout the day about this, one of the critical aspects is being able to translate the data, the understanding, the insights to whoever needs that information. So it's talking to a physician and understanding what analytics I should be building for them. 
Again, this is where some of my background helps. It's also getting the trust for the, for the physician and the care coordinators so that when I deliver that to them, they know what I'm delivering, why I'm delivering it to them, and what it means for them, how they should be using it. Um, and, and this requires this business to analytic translation at all levels. So that's not just for physicians. That's sometimes someone like an engineer talking to actuaries or talking to the marketing team or the product team or uh, revenue program management or whoever it is. The, they all have their own nomenclature, but you need to have a, a cohort that is able to understand the data and the analytics, but is also able to go out and have a broad reach throughout your organization and ideally outside of your organization to, to bring the needs back and deliver the information out. And, and the value of this is really bringing all this data together so that we can make it available for our members. Um, so you know, this is a, a kind of stylized example of something where when an individual calls up a customer service rep, we don't just have their demographics, but we also have things like you know, a timeline of our interactions that we've had with them. We have their care team here. Maybe a series of appropriate care gaps that should be addressed during this, um, during this interaction. And you know, this, this brings us to the focus of what we're doing here, right? Um, I, I hope I've kind of convinced you that Highmark is a, a big enterprise and healthcare is a big industry, but what we really need to do is shrink that down to the size of a personal communication. And so we've talked about the data, we've talked about the industry forces, and we've talked about some of the people, process, technologies that we're using to utilize big data and big decision processes big decision support, but ultimately what we're trying to do is allow for someone to call up their healthcare provider and have a well-informed, meaningful conversation. Thank you.